Three years ago when we created Synadia, our goal was to democratize secure access to the world's technologies, to connect everything, the world's digital systems, services, and devices. Even in today's cutting edge systems, these distributed systems, they're communicating by making these individual telephone calls. And what we actually want is we don't want a silo technology. We don't want everyone to have their own cell tower or their own ability to generate electricity as a default means to get it. We want a utility, right? We want the uh, electric grid. We want the global cellular network. And so the goal for Synadia at the very beginning of its history was, what happens if the connective technologies that can, you know, connect all of these distributed system components, what if that was a utility? Every single distributed system that you know of, no matter how complex and how many moving parts are involved in that, are doing two fundamental things. It's either making a statement or asking a question. NATS is a technology, we call it a connected technology, that powers both of those interaction models. It allows you to make statements and allows you to ask questions of other people. What's unique about NATS is, is that it gives you secure, democratized access to these statements and these questions. Meaning that it doesn't matter where the person asking the question is running. It doesn't matter how many responders there are. It doesn't matter how many times a piece of information that I'm making a statement about may be processed. This is kind of the, the decoupling of these systems that's so important. The applications just know they're either making a statement or asking a question. The infrastructure, right, moving from silo technology to utility to hybrid utility type of technologies, essentially replaces all of those point-to-point -point phone calls with something like the global cellular network or the internet. It's just there, it's on, you just plug it in and you just go. So another way to think about Synadia as a company and trying to provide democratize secure access to the world technologies. What does that look like and why do we care? Well, remember, not so long ago, if you wanted to do anything with a bank, you had to get in a car, drive to a branch, go in, meet with a teller, discuss what you're trying to do, deposit or withdraw or whatever like that. And of course, modern you know, systems today is, I don't know the last time I stepped into a branch of, of a bank. You know, I do everything on the computer, or even now I do it on my, my phone, right? I can do mobile banking on my phone. And so now all of a sudden I have democratized access to the banking system on my phone with instantaneous real-time feedback. And so digital systems and, and services right now are kind of operating in that get in the car and drive to the bank model. And what we believe is the, the massive opportunity for Synadia is providing the enabling technology that can be adopted across the world in any vertical solution, in any type of technology platform to give you that secure democratized access to the world's technologies. The future is all going to be dependent on data and how we handle it. And, and what I've learned along the way is that different architectures are needed to, to pull data together. It, it's the same way as we drive. We, sometimes we need freeways, but you also have to do side streets to get to the houses. And so we need different forms of infrastructure. So companies like Synadia are foundational for the next data architecture to reach us all in this very moving world. So it's really as simple as you need both a centralized approach and a decentralized approach. And the decentralized approach is what we're banking on with Synadia to help deliver the moving elements of our society. And we're banking on the cloud to pull it all together in a more centralized kind of view. So it's, it's all connected by data and you need multiple architectures to bring together a collective intelligence of the future. And that's what we think Synadia is foundational about. Success for Synadia looks very specific to us. It looks like a company that enables a technology that generates a broad ecosystem that literally connects every digital system, service, and device on the planet together. The world of digital system, service, and devices, and if they are truly hyper-connected, they truly have access to everything, will have the ability to dwarf that transformation of how you buy goods and services and products. And that hyper you know, personalization that we talk about all the time will be massively dwarfed by computers saying, we're gonna access not tens of data points, they will have the ability to access billions and trillions of data points and be able to detect patterns that no human will ever be able to do. But that first step and that defines success for Synadia is how do we get everything connected so that we can get secure access to all that information to allow the machine learning and the AI wave to kind of take effect. This next decade is gonna see massive value creation as we start to connect every single person and every single device and every single device to each other. But in order to unlock the value across every single industry, we need to have a capability in which we know that 
the communications between devices are outside of their individual firewalls, where people feel safe and where all of a sudden new systems and new experiments and capabilities come together and we need a new approach. We need a system that is safe, ubiquitous, and trustworthy. And that's why, for me, Synadia has a winning solution. We firmly believe that a technology that's going to connect the world's digital system services and devices needs to operate as a utility, like electricity, like the global cellular network, but needs to be extensible in a way that doesn't ask permission from anyone and yet can still be trusted.